Hello, welcome to this primary candidate forum co-sponsored by the Daily Record newspaper and the League of Women Voters. My name is Charlie Sorensen and I am the Voter Services Chair for the League of Women Voters, Kittitas County. Founded in 1920, the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization with 800 affiliates across the country. It encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League never endorses or opposes candidates or political parties at any level. We don't care how you vote, only that you vote. League membership is open to all genders, ages 16 and over, and we invite you all to join us. Our moderator for this primary candidate virtual forum event is Catherine Murphy. Catherine has been a member of the League since 2017, where she has filled a variety of roles at the state and local level. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Charlie. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to moderate our virtual 2020 primary candidate forums. These events offer voters the opportunity to hear directly from candidates in response to questions sourced from inside our community. As with everything else right now, we are learning how to modify traditional in-person events to virtual ones. The League of Women Voters records and retains a full unedited copy of all candidate forums. The League of Women Voters, if any portion of a League forum is redistributed out of context, to make a candidate appear to say something they did not say or are edited to make a candidate look bad or in any way they did not actually look in the original forum, then the League of Women Voters will alert the media, provide the unedited video for comparison and file appropriate complaints with any, any applicable governing authority. For the virtual 2020 primary forums, we record each candidate interview using the same structure a 60 second opening statement, 90 second responses to three community sourced questions, and a 60 second closing statement. The forum recordings are being offered in two formats. Viewers can watch each interview as a standalone choice, and they can watch a five part playlist which shows all candidates in the order they appear on the ballot answering the same question in a compiled video. Part one includes this introduction and each candidate's opening statement. Parts two through four show each question being asked, then the candidate's responses. Part five shows each candidate's closing statements, plus my closing remarks. The forum recordings will be available at the Kittitas County League website and our YouTube channel, on the Daily Record website, and on Ellensburg Community Television, Spectrum Channel 191, and Inland Networks. Kittitas Public Utility District Commissioners serve a six-year term. They ensure the district continues to deliver affordable, dependable electricity to rural and urban areas. The commission establishes policy, approves plans, budgets, and expenditures, and reviews the district's operations. The legal responsibilities and powers of the district, including the establishment of rates and charges for services rendered, are exercised through this commission. Five candidates are running for Kittitas Public Utility District Commissioner position number one. Rick Catlin, Jim Henderson, Ron Mitchell, Patrick Kelleher, and Tom Morris. Now I'm very happy to welcome Tom Morris to the forum. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. We will start with your 60 second opening statement. Thank you, Catherine. Hi, I'm Tom Morris. I am running for PUD commissioner position one. I graduated from Ellensburg High School in 1982, as well as my wife. We were married shortly after in 1984. We have four sons, all who live here in the Valley close to us, thankfully. After we were married, Sandy and I, my wife Sandy and I, moved to Seattle where we spent a little time and I worked for the Boeing company. At that point, we had our oldest son, Trevor, and after we had Trevor, we decided to come home and spend our married life and raise our family here in Ellensburg. We have a shop here in town that the older two boys, Trevor and Tyler, are starting to take over 
And so I am slowly stepping away from that. And I am looking forward to the challenges of being able to be a commissioner and continue learning as I get a little older. I want to learn new things and I'm just looking for the challenge. Thank you. Question number one, what experiences in education make you suitable for this position and why are you running? Mr. Morris, you have 90 seconds to respond. So I'll start with my education. After I graduated, I graduated from Ellensburg High School. I went to J.M. Perry Institute down in Yakima and I got a auto body repair degree. Shortly after that, as I started in that trade, as I said in my opening statement, my wife and I moved to Seattle. I worked in a body shop there and then I went to work for the Boeing company. During that time, I went back to school at Everett Valley Community College and took the, the courses and got my A degree in public speaking. At Boeing, I ran quality improvement for the interior division as well as statistical analysis for them. That started me in the direction of knowing that I was interested in statistical analysis and being in the managerial position. When we moved home, my wife and I both took jobs here and several years later, I bought the shop that we own now, and we have spent 23 years running that shop. In most every job I've had, I ended up in the managerial positions, and I find myself that I enjoy putting teams together so that people, people can do so much more as a team, and I enjoy that challenge of putting teams together to see what we can accomplish as a team. I'm looking forward to the commissioner job because I love new challenges and I think I can bring all of my vast experience from my career to this position. Thank you. Question number two. Customers are increasing their use of renewable energy which results in lowered demand for the electricity the PUD sells. This forces the utility to increase prices. How will you balance support for renewable energy with a balanced PUD budget? Mr. Morris, you have 90 seconds. Renewable energy is definitely a thing that is, is here and it has became more evident as we go along. The PUD is in an interesting position with selling power from vendors to which they purchase and then transferring that to their customers. I, th I believe that the PUD will need to find a way to either somehow develop their own solar, wind, power systems, go more in a direction of using more of that power. And we will have to embrace the renewable energy that is here in front of us now. I can't sit here and say that I know how all of that will happen. I don't believe until if I am elected and I'm in that position and I can understand fully where the PUD sits as term of customers in terms of their customer base and how much their customers are using renewable energy. I don't think I can give a solid answer as to what that percentage will be and how the PUD will move forward. I know that we're very fortunate to have the commissioners we have, one of is vastly uh, understands renewable energy. So I look forward to being able to take that challenge and to be able to explore how we move forward with renewable okay. energy. Thank you. Question three, as the price of wholesale power goes up, what role should the PUD play to assure that consumers receive electricity at a minimum rate? Mr. Morris, you have 90 seconds to respond. You know, one of the nice things about the PUD 
is because it is a public utility, we don't have the profits that we need to generate as the private power companies do. The PUD is able to distribute power to the whole county, which we don't. The PUD is in a position that we need to upgrade our transformers, update our substations. And as we're able to do that, I believe we'll be able to offer power at a reduced rate from what our competitors do. Right now, the PUD is in a unique position that we are able to be able to leverage what our profits have been to be able to get this infrastructure up and going and replace it and update the whole system so that we can offer more to our customers. Our goal would be to be able to offer power to every Kittitas County resident that is not on a municipal system. And I believe in doing such, we'll be able to offer competitive rates more than our competition. So I believe that, that with our budget, the PUD's budget is very good. It is in a good spot right now. And I think we can continue and make it even more affordable for our customers. Thank you. Mr. Morris, you now have 60 seconds to make your closing statement. Thank you for inviting me to be on this kind of experimental form. Uh, I appreciate the time that you put into this and I appreciate the, the voters educating themselves to get to know the candidates. I want to become the PUD commissioner because I am excited to be able to work in an organization to bring affordable power to all of our residents. I've been very fortunate and worked in nonprofits in the past. I've been fortunate in working overseas with people and seeing people that are truly in need. And I hope to bring all of my experiences from working with people, working in business, working with real estate, to be able to serve the PUD customers. The PUD, as I said before, is such a unique thing that we are able to have that I am very much looking forward to just serving the people of Kittitas County with the experiences that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morris, for joining us and sharing your views with the voters of Kittitas County. Thank you. As we conclude, I want to remind everyone that our ballot should arrive by July 17th, and we have until August 4th to return them. If you're not registered or need to change your address, you have till July 27th to do so online or by mail. After the 27th, you can register, update your registration, and vote in person through 8 p.m. on August 4th at the County Auditor's Office. If you don't get your ballot, please call or visit the County Auditor's Office right away. To get more information about all the candidates running in the 2020 primary, the Kittitas League has created a nonpartisan online voters guide. You will find links to candidate websites and other helpful resources there. You can get information also at vote411.org and at the Washington Secretary of State's office. Thank you to all the candidates who made time to participate in these events. The Kittitas County League wants to thank the Daily Record newspaper for co-sponsoring the 2020 virtual primary forums and to Ellensburg Community Television, Spectrum Network, and Inland Networks for showing the forum videos throughout the county. Finally, thank you to the many league volunteers who made these events possible. Your vote matters. Join me by casting your ballot in the August 4th primary. Thank you. <laughs>